valve. Install the ribbed V-belt tensioner. Fasten the power steering pump in accordance with the service literature. Fit the retaining bolt for the engine damping block support and install the cooling pump with a new gasket. Attach the coolant pump pulley. When screwing firmly in place, counter hold with the special tool EN46104 and tighten in accordance with the service literature. Screw the coolant discharge port firmly in place with a new gasket and attach the coolant hose. Fasten the starter wiring harness bracket at the top. Position the ribbed V-belt and install the engine damping block support. Attach the bracket for the power steering line. Install the right hand engine damping block. Attach the coolant line with a new gasket to the coolant discharge port. From below, attach the lower bolt of the starter wiring harness bracket. Firmly tighten the underneath bolt for the engine damping block support. Place the torsional vibration damper in position. Screw in the bolt of special tool J41998B as far as the stop. And fit the torsional vibration damper by turning the nut. Firmly tighten the new bolt with torque and torque angle as stated in the service literature. Place the ribbed V-belt in position. Remove the frame. Clip the power steering oil line onto the front axle body and complete the vehicle underneath. Above, on the clean sealing surface, apply sealing compound to the interfaces of the cylinder head and timing case cover. As protection for the new gaskets of the cylinder head cover, fit the assembly sleeves EN46101. Place the cylinder head cover 135 in position. Remove the assembly sleeves again and 
tighten the bolts with torque as stated in the service literature. Attach the wiring trough and wiring harness for cylinders 135. Attach the non-return valve for the crankcase venting system. Apply sealing compound to the clean sealing surface of cylinder head 246. Fit the assembly sleeves EN46101. Place the cylinder head cover 246 in position. Remove the assembly sleeves again. And tighten the bolts with torque as stated in the service literature. Attach the engine wiring harness. and attach the wiring harness plug and earth cable. Attach the engine transport shackle. Install the secondary air system line for cylinders 246. and install the ventilation line. Fasten the turbocharger control unit. Install the secondary air system delivery line and screw firmly in place. Install the secondary air system non-return valve for cylinders 246 with a new gasket. Attach the crankcase vent line. Attach the turbocharger heat shield. The wiring harness plug for the charge pressure control solenoid valve. And the solenoid valve bypass. Install the battery support and battery. Remove the cloths from the intake ducts. Place a new gasket in position and install the lower part of the intake manifold. Install the fuel distributor pipe. Ensure the injectors are seated correctly. Use new seal rings. Attach the wiring harness for the injectors. Install the ignition modules on both cylinder banks.
fit the wiring harness. Fit the wiring harness on cylinder head 135. Attach the power steering reservoir with return hose. Connect the fuel supply line and attach the tank vent valve with lines. When fitting the new gasket, ensure that it's positioned correctly. Connect the throttle valve module wiring harness plug. Place the upper part of the intake manifold in position. and screw firmly in place. Attach the wiring harness bracket for the injectors. Install the bracket with the crankcase vent lines. Attach the vacuum line and the bracket for the engine wiring harness. Attach the earth connection for the engine control unit and connect the wiring harness plugs. Install the coolant return line and the charge air pipe. Clip in the power steering line and Connect the charge pressure sensor wiring harness plug. Attach the upper engine cover, the air cleaner housing with air intake pipe, the intake pipe for the secondary air system, and connect the wiring harness plug for the mass air flow meter. Connect the battery, top up operating fluids and program volatile memories. To remove the timing chains, the timing case cover must be removed. First of all, the camshafts are disconnected. To do this, using special tool EN46111, turn the crankshaft clockwise. Until the flat areas of the camshafts for cylinder bank 246 are approximately parallel with the cylinder head. Place special tool EN46105-1EU in position. And continue turning. Until the special tool engages. Now, special tool EN46105-2EU must fit onto the camshafts of cylinder bank 135. The timing chains are attached so that they overlap. The secondary chain of cylinder bank 246 
lies behind the primary chain. The secondary chain of cylinder bank 135 lies in front of the primary chain. Therefore, the timing chain of cylinder bank 135 must be removed first. To do this, remove both bolts and take out the chain tensioner with gasket. Detach the tensioning rail and the guide rail. Remove the timing chain of cylinder bank 135. The secondary chains are roller chains. To remove the primary chain, remove the tensioner with gasket and the two guide rails. Unscrew the bolt and take out the intermediate sprocket 135 with the primary chain, a toothed chain. To remove the secondary chain of cylinder bank 246, detach the tensioner tensioning rail and guide rail and remove the timing chain with intermediate sprocket. When replacing the timing chains, start with cylinder bank 246. The two chain sprockets have markings on them. The light-coloured links of the secondary chains are laid on these. The third light-coloured chain link is now underneath. Install the intermediate sprocket. And tighten the bolt firmly with torque. Fit the guide rail. With the aid of a mirror, check that the lower light-coloured chain link is engaged in such a way that it's visible through the window in the intermediate sprocket. Then install the tensioning rail. 